It's Friday, July 10th, 2015, and let's talk about what happened this week over at xdadevelopers.com. First up, a few deal alerts. Flipkart has slashed the price on the Huawei Honor 6, taking it from just under 20,000 rupees to just under 17,000 rupees. So that's a pretty decent discount if that's a device that you've been waiting on. Through July 26, Samsung is offering a $200 rebate on the Note 4, perhaps trying to get rid of some stock in preparation for the release of the Note 5. Keep in mind, if you're going to do that, you do have to pay the full price for the device, then you get a $200 rebate back later, and you can't combine that with any other sorts of discounts or coupons or offers or anything else. Now, a little while back, we talked about Google and Udacity teaming up to offer these nano degrees specifically for Android related things, but there's a bunch of them out there. Well, I don't know if they're just not doing particularly well, or maybe if they're just trying to drive more people to come to them, but they're offering a 50% rebate back on those as long as you finish the program within 12 months. So if you've been holding out on doing this because the price was a little bit too high for you, as long as you confront that price and you know that you're going to be able to finish it within a year, it may be worth taking another look at it. Now we mentioned before that they were going to be offering some free apps of the week over on Google. For the moment, they've all been kid related and another one has been released. This one is Thomas's Musical Day for Percy. It's normally a $4.99 app and it is now available for free for this week. So if you have kids and they love Thomas the Tank Engine, it may be worth taking a look at that. Moving on, there were a couple of device leaks. Some new images of the Huawei Mate 8 have become available. Looks like a device with a really interesting set of features. And there's supposedly going to be a couple of different variants, both with 3 or 4 gigs of RAM and 32 or 64 gigs of storage. There's also a video that leaked out showing off some of the new design features that are supposedly coming in the Note 5. And interestingly enough, it is going to look an awful lot like the Galaxy S6. Can't really say that that's entirely surprising. Might be a disappointment to some, who knows. I've had several of you guys ask me about the kernel sources for the Yodafone 2 and when they would be available. Well, as of this week, they have officially been released by Yodafone. They weigh in at right about 100 megabytes and they are available directly from Yodafone. So if you've been waiting for those sources to start developing for the device, now you can. There were a couple of interesting stories that came out of OnePlus, which is appropriate given that I'm wearing my Never Settle shirt, right? The first story is that Pete Lau from OnePlus has announced that the OnePlus 2 is going to be coming in at just under $450. What I find interesting about that is when the OnePlus plus one was first announced when they were first teasing it ahead of time they made a very similar announcement they said either 500 or 450 or something like that before the one plus one was unveiled and we all know how that went it was significantly cheaper than that now i'm not saying that the one plus two is going to be that price 450 still isn't a bad price as far as i'm concerned for a flagship device but we'll just have to wait and see but if you're still in the market for a one plus one people that have received the one plus one recently are saying that their devices are coming with a screen protector pre-applied to it leading a lot of people to think that they're receiving refurbished devices but carl from one plus has come out and said these are not refurbished devices they're all brand new they just put these screen protectors on at this point because the gorilla glass is not as susceptible to scratches but it does not necessarily stop shattering so they put that screen protector on there to try to help in case the screen does shatter not a bad idea the android one program has finally expanded some more it's now available in pakistan and the first device that'll be available there is the q mobile a1 and it's going to be available for the equivalent of about 115 us dollars definitely not a bad price so if you're in pakistan and you've been holding out hope for that inexpensive android one device, now you should be able to get your hands on one. Google has come out and released a Chromecast Ethernet adapter, not something I ever really expected to see, but if you've got a place that doesn't have good Wi-Fi signal, or if you've got Ethernet only, if you're in a hotel room that only has wired Ethernet, this might be a good option for you, and it's right at 15 bucks, so that's really not all that bad. You can pair that up with the $25 or $30 Chromecast, and you've got a reasonable media option there. Google has also started rolling out Android 5.1.1 to Project Fi users, so if you've got the Nexus 6 and you're on Project Fi, now there is a specific build for that device. Speaking of Android 5.1.1, an LG employee has revealed to Android Pit that the LG G2 is going to be receiving Android 5.1.1. This is going to be doing some bug fixing, obviously, but it's also going to be bringing in some features from the LG G4. So if you've got the G2, be on the lookout for that update. Moving on over to the forum, it looks like a build of OmniROM for the Motorola Zoom is now available, and it's based on Android 5.1.1. If you remember, the Motorola Zoom released quite a long time ago running Honeycomb. If any of you guys remember Honeycomb, wow. It's still a bit of an alpha release, but if you've still got a Zoom, Zoom kicking around out there, you may want to take a look at that and get some new hotness on it. An updated build of Paranoid Android based on version 5.1 is now available as well. So if you've been using Paranoid Android in the past and you want to get some newer versions of software, you may want to take a look at it. It is still pretty bare bones at this point. It's mainly just AOSP with some minor stuff on top of it. And it's currently only available for the Nexus devices, but still might be worth keeping an eye on their forum threads and over on their site as well. XDA senior member Y Kavan created a thread talking about how he put Windows 7 on his 
Asus Zenfone 2. It's an Intel-based device, and from what I understand, it's not terribly difficult to make this happen. But it looks like he did it the way that a lot of people have done full Linux installations on top of Android in the past, where you run it in a cheroot with SSH servers and everything, and then you VNC into it later on. Still very cool to see a full Windows 7 installation running on top of this device, and apparently running pretty decently as well. Go ahead and take a look at his thread for more details. XDA member Wondering About has put together a thread talking about how you can root the T-Mobile S6 or S6 Edge without actually tripping Nox off on it. Now you have to have a very specific bootloader for this. All the information about it is available through the thread, so if you've got one of those devices on T-Mobile and you don't want to mess with your Nox counter, you may want to go ahead and take a look at his thread as well. And finally to wrap things up, there were three other videos posted to XDA TV this week. TK did an Exposed Tuesday talking about protected apps. Then he did an Android Basics 101 video talking about how to install a custom ROM. And then he did an app review of Solid Explorer's big update. But that's going to be about all for me for today. I'm still here on vacation in Myrtle Beach with my family, so I'm going to go spend some more time with them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit that like button down below the video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more videos when they become available. And I will see you again next time.